Hi, I'm Diane Cometa. Today on Dishing with Diet, I'm gonna make chicken cacciatore. This has been uh, one of my family's favorite recipes. I started making it, um, I don't even wanna say how many years ago, 25 plus years ago. Um, and it was given to me by an Italian family member. So it's authentic, but it's a little bit different than some of the other uh, chicken cacciatore recipes that I've seen. So I'm just gonna show you what you need and you can get started. You need some chicken thighs that have been washed and skin removed and then patted dry. I have some tomato sauce, tomato paste, I have a little bit of brown sugar, some ground thyme, sliced garlic, dried oregano, an onion that's been chopped, olive oil, and red wine. Okay, so before we go over to the stove and get things started, um, you might have noticed if you haven't, if you've seen other chicken cacciatore recipes, that this one did not include the common um, mushrooms and peppers. But I really think you're gonna like it. So let's get over to the stove and get things started. I'm putting some olive oil in my pan. And then uh, the pan is not hot yet. I just turned the heat on, and now I'm gonna put the garlic into the cold oil. So uh, this way, as the oil heats, the garlic will heat at the same time and it'll release its um, flavor. And then once this gets brown, I'm gonna, or starts to brown, I'm gonna remove it, and then we're gonna put our chicken in. So I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. So I just took out the last piece of garlic and now what I'm gonna do is add in my chicken and my onions. And you might have to do this in batches. You don't wanna crowd the chicken in there. You wanna leave a little space. So depending on how big your pot is and how much chicken you're using. And now I'm just gonna cook this uh, on one side until it starts to brown and then I'm gonna flip it and then I'll continue with the rest and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so I'm just gonna remove the last couple pieces of chicken that I have here and they're all nicely browned. And now I have the brown bits at the bottom and I'm gonna take my paste and add that to the pan and we're gonna cook this paste for a couple minutes. Whoops. And we're gonna scrape up the brown bits down there. Okay, so this has been uh, cooking, you know, for a couple minutes, and that's good, I scraped everything up. And now we're gonna be adding in the sauce. So just put that in there. and then a little bit of water in each one for a rinse to get the little bit out of the bottom. And then you wanna give this a nice mix through. And then we're gonna add in the seasonings. So just stir this to combine it. and you're gonna raise your heat up a little bit here. We're not putting the chicken back in until this comes to a simmer. So now, I'm gonna add in my oregano. Now with the oregano, um, I usually eyeball it. Like, actually I think I need a little bit more than that because I like to cover the top. <laughs> That's what I was told. Cover the top of the pot with oregano. <laughs> and then the thyme few good sprinklings of the ground thyme. I guess that's about an eighth of a teaspoon. And a little bit of brown sugar, just to cut um, the acid from the tomatoes. And just a touch of salt. Give this a stir. And this is a nice red wine. I use a Marcella. I have uh, Marcella on hand all the time. So just give this a stir through. My sauce has started to simmer, and now I'm gonna add the chicken back in. So the chicken's nice and brown, and I'm just gonna send these guys all into the pool. Now everybody's in there, and we're just giving it a stir around. And this is gonna cook for about an hour and a half. 
Uh, you just want to reduce the heat to medium low and then put your lid on uh, so it's tilted and not completely covering the pot and stir it occasionally and I'll show you what we're going to do next. All right, I just turned the chicken off about uh, 10 minutes ago and it stopped boiling now. So I'm gonna take a piece out. I just want you to see what it looks like. You see it's starting to come off of the bone and I just want you to see, see it's fork tender but it didn't all fall apart into the sauce. But now I'm just gonna get my pasta and everything ready and I'll show you how I serve it up. I like to serve it over the penne and I like each person to be able to put as much chicken on their plate as they want. So I usually put it on the side like that and um, with the sauce I just put some extra sauce on the side and you can just help yourself. But um, you know as you could see this doesn't have the traditional mushrooms and the peppers in it. So feel free to add those if you want. Um, I prefer it this way because it's a little bit more versatile and I really wouldn't have been able to get away with serving this to my kids when they were little if it did have mushrooms and peppers in there unless I ground them up. So I wasn't about to do that. Um, anyway, it's great because you, you know, have the versatility with the sauce to use it in other things like the Aurora sauce. Um, you can, you know, make an Aurora sauce with it or a Rosa sauce. I'll leave those links when I make those recipes or you could just use it for lasagna or put it over penne uh, and it's great for the fall and the winter months it's like one of those comfort foods and I also like it because it's like a one-pot deal you know you get everything in there so you have a lot less cleanup and that's always good in my book and with a batch like this you have food for the week so it's a win-win what did what does guy say win-win <laughs> winner winner chicken dinner win-win where did I get that anyway I shouldn't go quoting other people that's my lesson learned um, for the full recipe go to my website dishingwithdye.com and as usual I hope I made your life a little easier more enjoyable and delicious I'll see you next time bye bye